Hi everybody. This is my 20 gallon open topped office tank. And today we're going to do some really simple work to it. We're going to do a basic water change. I'm not even going to use a gravel vac this time. I just have a scoop that when I'm doing a quick water change, I can just scoop some water right out of the top. That will serve partially to skim the surface, which I don't really need to do in this case, but a lot of times I will have uh, floating leaves and floating uh, bits of flower and stuff that have fallen from the uh, temple plant here and are floating on the surface and I can get them with my scoop But either way, I'm just going to scoop a little bit of water out of there We're going to top the tank back off and that's going to be about it The real difference is going to be something that I'm hoping will have a long-term effect and that is adding a root tab if you look at the Temple plant here. I'm going to try to hold the camera high enough that you can sort of see down onto those leaves you can see how pale yellow and faded i know my plants don't get very much in the way of calcium and magnesium uh, i can't say my water has no calcium and magnesium in it but it has very little and for my house plants i actually have to put a cow mag supplement in it uh, from time to time or they will start suffering so it's possible that it's a cow mag deficiency making my temple plant look like this I'm not really sure, but we're going to trim some of those top branches off of there and I'm going to put a root tab in and we're just going to see if maybe uh, getting some of those nutrients right down there into the roots will make a difference and, and green those leaves up and give us some new vigorous growth and possibly even another uh, round of flowers. So not going to be a big difference between the before and after. I'm just going to remove some of the tannins from the tank. And then when I trim back that plant, it's going to open it up for a lot more uh, light shining down into it. So call that your before. And there's your after. Now, real quick, look in the bottom left-hand corner right near the heater. It's my pistogramma. I was actually prepared to discuss how my pistogramma vanished out of this tank. I talked... Uh, about a week ago I shot a video and I had said that I had not seen the epistogramma in this tank for quite a while. It's always been shy, it's always been a little bit reclusive, but I've always seen it. It's always come out at feeding time, I've always seen it in the morning when I turn the lights on and then it would go and sort of dash away and hide, but I've never not seen it for lengthy uh, periods of time. And it's been days. And with the water change and all the plants I've removed out of there, which we'll talk about in a minute, I saw no sign of it. I looked around while I was waiting for the tank to sort of settle down and the uh, swirling detritus to kind of do its thing and nothing. So I was fully prepared to come in here and start explaining how my pistogram is gone. You know, I don't know what happened to it. It just vanished out of the tank. And there she is, bigger than life. I could not believe it when I walked in the room. And she was out, so I grabbed my camera, and we're going to go ahead and do the after part of the video right now, even though I'm not quite ready to do so. I still have a lot of fluorescent paint all over my fingers. I'm afraid that's going to be showing up in the camera, but whatever, you'll have to deal with it. I wanted to point out that this time of year, my brain has sort of switched to outdoors activity. I'm thinking more about my boat and getting out and fishing and hiking and that sort of stuff so we'll do what we can with maintaining my tanks and everything but I'm probably going to be doing a lot more uh, outdoorsy kind of stuff as time goes on here over the next couple of months by the end of summer when it gets all hot and muggy in August and whatnot I'll be back indoors but for a while I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time outdoors so just sort of be warned for my regular viewers you might be getting a little bit uh, more slipshod videos here coming up over the next couple of months anyway um, what I did with the water change while I was in there, I did a pretty big water change. I removed water till the tank was about half empty, and then I topped it all the way back off, as you can clearly see. I also trimmed a lot of the temple plant out of there that I was talking about. I threw it in a planter, and we'll see if it roots in or not. I don't know if it will. Um, I've put other stuff in there. Most of that rooted in, but it just sat there for so long that it eventually just died off anyway because I have nothing to do with it or nowhere to put it. So if it roots, it roots. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't really care. I don't need it for anything, but it'll be interesting to see if I get any 
uh, rooted babies from the cuttings. Uh, in addition to that, I put the root tab right here, uh, sort of front and center, tucked it down as deep as I could. Remember, there's sand in the bottom of this with gravel sort of mostly on the top. And so I tucked it all the way down into the sand. I put that little rock over it to make sure it stays under the sand. And, of course, I've got the tab sitting all the way over here on the other side of the room. But this is what we're using, just Flourish root tabs. And I checked, uh, again, for my regular viewers, remember I, I mentioned how I got some root tabs that I didn't think had the nitrogen or the phosphorus in them. Uh, these do. It does not have very much. But when I looked at the ingredients on the back, uh, it very clearly has nitrogen and phosphorus or phosphates. Very small amounts of them, but it does contain them. So... We'll have to wait and see how this does. You know, the Seachem Flourish is a well-respected, well-known brand. Uh, I've used some of their other products before. This is my first time ever using root tabs. I've got them in one of my tanks downstairs now uh, for a water lily that I just planted. And now we're going to try the root tabs with this here uh, temple plant and see what it does with that. So that's what's going on with the temple plant. Got it trimmed down and gave it a root tab. Um, in the back corner here... That was really, really dense and thick with Java moss. This whole area was just packed with Java moss. Uh, in fact, I collected it up in my scoop, and it's way down in the bottom of that. So that is a pretty good size clump of Java moss that I collected out of there. A lot of it was wrapped around uh, the power head, so the power head was really uh, reduced flow. And so now we got the tank swirling around. You can see I got much more uh, water current moving around the tank. Hopefully that'll keep it a little bit cleaner, looking a little bit nicer. And I've got a ton of little guppy fry swimming around in the tank. That was my other reason for thinking the epistogramma was dead. I've seen that epistogramma eat guppy fry, and I've even seen it chase some of the smaller guppies. I was a little concerned when I put these uh, rather expensive... Uh, El Tigre, the green tigers, uh, antlers in there. They're so small that that epistogramma could eat them if it got a hold of one. And I thought, you know, that's $5 fish food, you know. So everything's been fine with that. But I did see the epistogramma eat some of the fry. And they'd always just kind of kept the fry in check. There was never more than one or two fry in this tank. And since I stopped seeing that epistogramma, I've just got a bunch of fry in this tank. I don't know if you can see them swimming around in there, but there's a bunch of them down in the Java. Uh, as the water level was getting lower and I was scooping, uh, I was putting the scoop in on this end and I kept having to double check because I was, as the water was sort of flowing in, it was sucking little babies out of the Java fern there uh, and into my scoop. And so I had to be really careful. I had to pour a few of them back into the tank to make sure I didn't accidentally dump them out. So there's a lot of little fry swimming around in the tank. That's going to be interesting to see uh, how they grow up and develop. I've also got those red wag platies down in my quarantine tank. And I think they are going to end up in this tank. I know it looks kind of empty right now. Uh, but there really is quite a few guppies swimming around in this tank. I don't know why they're being so uh, shy. They're swimming around up here in the corner. But there you go. So that's what we've got done with the tank today. Just a water change. I did wipe the glass down uh, on the inside. I actually forgot to wipe it down on the outside. Like I said, I walked in and saw that epistogramma and just grabbed my camera. So I'm glad I got her on video and we got to see her still in there. So there you go. Again, not a huge deal, but we are going to wait and find out what that root tab does to this tempo plant. I'm really hoping that gets nice and lush and green and starts coming back in color, starts getting flowers on it again and you know really sort of redevelop so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out so make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss that or anything else i got coming up you never know what it's going to be with me so thanks for watching this one a little more long-winded than i expected but again my regular viewers know that's what you usually get with me so thanks again i'll see you real soon in the next one